That spring of 1940, the Wehrmacht cut through France like a knife through butter. Then in wartime, horses of the country can quietly eat their five kilos of hay per day. It means that for Hitler, this offensive was a walk in the park. It's time for Mussolini, his eternal ally, to join the fray in order to reap, at least expense, his share of glory and loot. Pagan legend has it that Romulus and Remus, the founders of Rome, were raised by a she-wolf who bequeathed her strength to them. A godsend for Il Duce's propaganda office, which dreams of turning the Italian fighters into wolves. Even though the dogs of the Transalpine army scarcely seem ready to cross the Rubicon. It doesn't take too much either to accustom pups to the din of war. Though, why not combine work with pleasure? What better than the tumult of a station when Mama leaves for the front to do her duty? It's a big show for the men and guaranteed suffering for the animals who nobody cares about. June 1940, Italian animals and soldiers cross the Alps, bound for glory. Even though on arrival, Mussolini's men soon fall from their pedestal and have to make do with the conquest of Monton, a small French border town. Their German ally, meanwhile, is already at the top of the Eiffel Tower, symbol of Paris, capital of France, which on June 22nd signs the armistice. To dominate the world, to see better, be better seen by one's men and those on the ground. For that, what better than on horseback? The Wehrmacht officers had long understood this, and on June 14, 1940, Lieutenant General von Briesen could already watch his 30th Division parade through Paris. With France down, Marshal Pétain, after declaring the armistice, chooses collaboration with Germany, leaving Britain alone to face its destiny. That small boy, his name is Andrew, saw the flight of the pigeons and the falling of the bombs in Warsaw. Now again he watches the pigeons in another square, Trafalgar Square. Again he hears the hum of the German aeroplanes, this time over England. During summer 1940, Hitler bombed the aerodromes of England before trying to invade. They didn't count on the ardor of the young French flying aces of the RAF, 
who in these days of heroism flew constant unceasing sorties to defend their country. Relayed by British propaganda, their exploits echo in the most remote countryside of the kingdom. The animals, of course, are along for the ride. The hunting party, for example. A chance to boast of the qualities of the legendary Spitfire, ready to throttle the enemy air force as surely as a greyhound will break its praised neck. If dogs can set an example, then other animals can be instructive. Part of the training of at least one squadron of the ATC is going to the London Zoo. The object being to study bird flight as it applies to aeronautics. And I can tell you that the Messerschmitt has nothing on this peregrine falcon whose estimated speed is 360 miles per hour. If the raptors speed through these dark hours, other birds can show aspiring pilots a thing or two. What about formation flight? Who got the idea first? Men? Or geese? B for victory. Allied geese, obviously. Geese show how flying in a V formation maintains visual contact with all and creates a long wake that sucks in those who follow, saving the group a lot of energy, or kerosene in the case of planes. In Germany, they are less ethereal and more murderous. In short, more Nazi. Der Beizhabicht Attila. Die Schüler der Flugzeugführerschule haben hier die beste Möglichkeit, nach Starten und Landen der Vögel zu studieren. Achtung! Der Vogel kommt im Steilflug auf die Beute klagen. Drückt einige Male kräftig zu. Herz und Lunge sind durchbohrt. Der Habicht fängt an zu ruppen. Lustig fliegen die Federn im Wind. The Germans have always loved poetry. And now, the moral of the story. Dieser herrliche Vogel ist kein Räuber, wie man fälschlich sagt, sondern einer der mutigsten und besten Jäger. Sie sind es, die Auslese schaffen im Haushalt der Natur. Darum schützt unsere herrlichen Greifvögel. Take it from us birds, for better or for worse, you are caught up in this battle of Britain where the skies are filled with hundreds of planes.